Unconditional parenting. Love your kids unconditionally and really meet their needs. What is parenting? Is it getting kids to bed without a fuss? Curing their picky eating habits or stopping them from being disobedient to you? The answer is no. Alfie Cohn, a well-known educator with 20 years of experience, suggests parents ask themselves the question, what are my long-term objectives for my children? To assist you in answering this question, this video presents. Unconditional parenting. Love your kids unconditionally and really meet their needs. 1. Definition of unconditional parenting. Not your kids or their behavior, unconditional parenting starts with you, the parent, in which you make an informed decision about how you want to relate your children. It starts with you deciding to show unconditional love and support for your kids for who they are, not their actions or achievements. You have to accept your kids 100%, unconditionally, no matter what. You need to be consistent with your love. Thinking you accept your kids unconditionally is far different from actually showing your kids this unconditional acceptance. You have to be consistent with both your words and your reactions. Practicing unconditional parenting means that even when your kids are screwing up, throwing tantrums, or just being downright annoying to put it in plain terms, you do not ignore them, scold them or discipline them in the old-fashioned sense of the word, you keep your calm and still show them that you love them. You treat your child with unconditional positive regard. Don't worry about spoiling your kids. Many parents are against a 100% acceptance regardless of everything, because they are concerned about how their kids learn responsibility, if they are not taught what is right and what is wrong, or in other words, if they are not punished for their mistakes and rewarded for their accomplishments. But you shouldn't worry as children will learn the consequences of their actions, even if they don't get punished or rewarded by you. For instance, if your kid has just broken his new expensive toy in frustration, he will, with or without your unconditional support, know that the toy is broken and cannot be played with in the same manner anymore. The unfortunate consequences are clear in any case. The difference is that with unconditional love, you heal the frustration or meet the need behind the throwing of the toy more effectively. What your kid wants here may be your attention, a warm hug or he is just tired and want to sleep. Fulfilling this need rather than punishing your kid for the annoying expression of the need is much more rewarding for both of you. 2. Guidelines in Unconditional Parenting. In the book Unconditional Parenting, the author Alfie Cohn encourages parents to reconsider their typical parenting discipline style and refrain from manipulating their children. Here are some of the main points. Don't set out a condition to show your love. Don't treat your kids according to their accomplishments or failures, because they may feel like having to do something to earn your love. They may think that affection only comes when they are successful or do things their parents want. This means to get your attention your kids will do ultimately anything to please you, including perhaps even trying to change their natural character to become someone who they think you might appreciate. Give unconditional support rather than conditional praise. Both threats and praise show that you are trying to control your children. Some might think that praise encourages kids and expresses affection, but Alfie Cohn says in his book that praise is really an instrument of control, in the sense that we teach our children that they will receive love and attention only if they obey. Unconditional support is not award-related. Unconditional support is a constant which provides basic security for your child. Your child's secure attachment to you is a condition that attachment research has proven crucial in healthy child development. Work with your kids rather than do to your kids. Working with your kids means finding out what the need is and working with it, fulfill it, rather than just squashing it, because the expression of the need like crying, seeking your attention is demanding on you. Doing to your kids means imposing your ideas or desires that you think are right onto your kid. For example, you think your kid needs to learn to sit quietly at the table through an entire meal. You try to control your kid by withdrawing your positive affection and thereby indirectly forcing your kid to live up to your ideas. So unconditional parenting is about sensing what it is your kid really needs and giving it to your kid, but it also is about not compromising yourself. 3. Positive Parenting Tips Many parents are still following conventional rules to control and force their children to obey to make their lives easier. However, controlling children isn't as good as it seems. So what is the right way to go? To start you off, you may begin by answering these questions. 
Do you often feel in doubt as to whether you are unnecessarily forcing your ideas onto your child? Do you often feel in doubt as to whether what you've been told is really the right way of disciplining your children? If you answer yes, you are not alone. Here are some tips to get through these doubts. Be sure that what you want makes sense. Does your child really need to eat his food at this very point? Is, is it really necessary for your child to start potty training now? Is it necessary or is it just what you think is necessary? Typically we have been unconsciously force-fed the answer to these questions, and these answers tend to rigidly rule us if we are not very aware of them. Norms are ridiculously powerful. They're like an invisible horse rider sitting firmly on our back dictating our pace and way to go. And for the most part, we don't even realize it. If your ideas do not do something good for your child, but instead go against what it is your child really needs, like security, respect, comfort, space to make his her own decisions etc., you can typically safely abandon these ideas. What you want should focus on your child's needs. If what you want is only a general norm and go beyond your child's needs, you have to give it a second thought. Old-fashioned parents are told that a child must be taught to be independent. Parents practicing this kind of child discipline may think that independence is a skill that comes from toughening up their kids by stripping them of their sense of security. For example, they might think that if they didn't force their child to fall asleep all alone, their child wouldn't be unable to sleep by himself or herself later in life. So rather than giving their child unconditional security, which might be what their child really needs, they would, with the best of intentions, follow the norm and force their unhappy child to fall asleep all alone in a dark room. How to know whether you're dealing with a norm or a need. Before making any decisions, try to sense where the idea comes from is it from your kid? Or does it have to be this way? If you sense it coming from your kid, it's most likely because you have tuned in, bonded and read your child. Congratulations, you've probably sensed a need. Go for it. Listen to your gut feeling and do what you can to fulfill that need. If it's just what your friends, your parents or society tell you, so maybe you are following preconceived ideas, which tend to focus on trying to control your child by doing to, typically overruling but also bribing. What are your parenting strategies? Tell us in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more videos of daily life skills.